So that was the original title, The Art and Science of Treating NTM Lung Disease and Managing Difficult Treatments and How to Get Patients Back on Track. So it just happened that I had a very complicated patient who kind of came to a fruition during this time, and I thought I would share, share her story with you. And forgive me, let me first thank Amy and Philip and all the nice folks at NTMIR. Thank you again for the invitation. You guys, I, I don't, you just haven't learned yet. Uh, but anyway, thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, so um, I am a participant in all three of the uh, Insumed trials for LAI, Eric Case or Alice, take your pick. Um, what should I call it? Alice? Is that? Okay. Um, this is my patient. MC, uh, a wonderful lady. Uh, oh, and, and forgive me. Uh, um, my uh, hospital went from paper records to an electronic medical record uh, somewhere in the mid 2000s, and they destroyed all of the uh, paper records soon after the uh, transition. So some of what I'm telling you depends on my memory and the memory of MC, which uh, unfortunately there are some gaps. So this nice lady uh, was uh, born in the uh, 1941, lifetime East Texas resident, uh, worked for a small town newspaper, keeper and guardian of local history. Anybody who needs to know anything about Troop Texas, MC is your lady. She can tell you about it. Uh, a short smoking history. Uh, and then in the mid-90s, uh, story familiar to everybody, developed cough, diagnosed with bronchi uh, bronchitis, and then some 18 to 24 months later was diagnosed with MAC. Her initial chest CT showed extensive cylindrical and, and saccular bronchiectasis with right middle lobe destruction. I have no clue how that could be mistaken for bronchitis, <laughs> but it was. Um, she really had a mixed picture uh, nodular bronchiectatic picture with some cavitation. Her sputum was strongly smear and culture positive. And she showed some mild restriction on her PFTs. Um, in the, oops, did I go the wrong way? Um, since, oh, uh, since 2004, uh, we've had more than 100 uh, sputum specimens for AFB analysis, and that's actually kind of important, and, and we'll show that. So since we started taking care of this lady in the mid-90s, uh, we have analyzed or collected more than 200 uh, sputum specimens from her. Um, so uh, initial treatment, uh, we started with three times weekly macrolide, rifamycin, and ethambutol. Uh, she was macrolide susceptible in the beginning. Her sputum remained strongly smear and culture positive, and because of that and recurrent hemoptysis, she underwent a right middle lobe uh, lobectomy. She did receive some parenteral medicine during that time. Um, there, there, uh, the next phase of this is hard because this is the time when we don't have good records. Uh, but my recollection of this is that we kind of lost touch or we had intermittent, um, intermittent contact and uh, there was some irregularity in her medication uh, during that time. Um, and unfortunately, during this period, she became macrolide resistant. And I, I, I hesitate to, um, I, you know, I'm not sure where responsibility for this lies. I, actually, it's mine, obviously. It's the captain of the ship business. Uh, but I wish I could tell you exactly how it happened, and it troubles me that, uh, that I can't. Uh, just over on the other side, um, well, um, so then going into the subsequent years, um, at, we had her on fluoroquinolone, uh, rifampin, ethambutol, inhaled amikacin, and she remained strongly AFB smear and culture positive. Um, not a lot of change uh, in her 
in her sputum status during this time, still, uh, or I'm sorry, clinical status during this time. Uh, you can see, actually I skipped over it on the last slide. Um, in 2009, uh, she also had a non-Q wave myocardial infarction without coronary artery obstruction. And then uh, during this period, uh, a daughter-in-law died of a severe infection. Her husband had a stroke and she had a second MI. I only bring this up in that, uh, what's that old saying is that uh, life is what happens in between making plans. So, you know, during this time, MC is also dealing with, with lots of other things besides just the, uh, the MAC infection. Um, during this time, symptomatically, the major problem for her was, was cough. Um, so then in, in July of 2012, uh, we, uh, uh, or we recruited MC into the uh, initial ERA case or ALICE study. Um, good news, bad news. Uh, she got accepted into the trial. The bad news is we found out she was also amicacin resistant uh, at, at that time. But she, she did enter uh, the study. Um, uh, following the um, uh, completion of the study, we were kind of at a loss for what to do for her after she completed this trial with their case. So at first she was on uh, moxifloxacin, ethambutol, and rifamycin, and then her insurance quit paying for moxifloxacin, so she was on ciprofloxacin, rifamycin, and ethambutol, which I would try to avoid if I had to walk over broken glass. <laughs> These were dark years for me. This was a tough time. It was hard to know what to do for her, but we, we decided not to do nothing. So, well, and you could argue maybe we still did nothing, but we, we were doing something for nothing. But something interesting happened. After she completed the error case trial, the first two sputum specimens we got from her were negative. That's the first, ne now we don't, I didn't have any of the sputum results from the trial, but the first two were negative. And then going forward, her sputum was more negative more often than positive. As you can see, there were other, other uh, events in her life. Her husband, who had had the stroke, died, and uh, her, she had a kitchen fire for, for goodness knows what reasons. Um, we subsequently decided we weren't doing enough, uh, or we, during this time we knew we weren't doing enough, but we were able to obtain uh, bedaquiline for her. Um, and as a companion medicine, uh, we, she had never received streptomycin, so we put a port in and we were treating her with intravenous streptomycin as well, in addition to uh, ethambutol. Um, and you can see it was 1000 to $2,000 a month copay for her uh, to, to receive uh, the bedaquiline. Um, you, uh, you see the A-T-A-M-H, that stands for, and then a miracle happened. <laughs> so all those sputum tests that we had been getting, every six months, my colleague, Dr. Wallace, in his laboratory, did in vitro macrolide susceptibility on those isolates, and boom, her consistently macrolide resistant MAC was now macrolide susceptible. So then we, we had bedaquiline inhaled amicacin, uh, this was just generic, ethambutol and uh, azithromycin. Subsequently, I was able to convince the folks at Insamed to let me put her back on Alice, even though we knew she was amicacin resistant. And so she subsequently was given bedaquil and ethambutol, uh, uh, azithromycin, and, uh, and Alice. Um, uh, just a quick word, uh, if I might, just a quick digression. Um, I, the sound that you don't hear is all of us holding our breath while we wait on the FDA to make a decision about Alice. 
The sound that I hope we hear in the near future is all of us exhaling together as the drug is approved. I think um, everyone here is convinced that this is an important addition to what we can do for our patients. And coincidental or not, microbiologically, there is no doubt in my mind that it was helpful to, to this patient. So at any rate, I, 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 I am, of course, personally invested in this, uh, but I think it's extraordinarily important. And um, again, as you know, uh, Alice is up, uh, has been put to the FDA and is now under consideration. So uh, light candles, burn incense, uh, whatever, whatever you need to do. Um, so again, sputum is AFB, was AFB uh, negative more common uh, than more commonly, AFB negative more commonly than positive during, uh, for most of this time. I just wanted to summarize, this is all of the antimicrobials that she received for MAC between 1998 and 2018. I put down some of the problems that she had uh, with each of them. Um, we tried to give her clofazamine, but she, when, uh, even though it's well tolerated by most people, she unfortunately uh, did not uh, tolerate it well. So now we come between two, February 2017 to February 2018, Bedaquilin, Nathamitol, Azithromycin, and Alice. MC has been sputum negative culture for 12 consecutive months while on therapy. She met disease success criteria. And so, for the first time in almost 20 years, MC is now off MAC medications, and I'm happy to say that her sputum remains uh, smear and culture negative. Um, you can see that she's had a little bit of a change in her pulmonary function. This is her chest radiograph, which has shown some progression over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, also her chest CT scan, there's no question that she's had adverse sequela of the, uh, of the disease, but I hope that I can tell you now that, uh, that at least for the time being, uh, she's doing okay. Now, one other thing, this is also what we've grown out of her sputum, um, uh, just a, a little microbiome uh, for her. This is all of the things we have tried to control her cough, uh, only uh, semi-successfully. Uh, that still remains her, her largest uh, or her most important uh, symptom. Um, but just, uh, I, I, as I say, I wanted to show her because I thought she embodied just about every management problem I could think of uh, for someone uh, over a very long period of time. Uh, acquired drug resistance, certainly drug toxicity and side effects, limited drug choices, of course, uh, drug costs we've heard about, and uh, availability, uh, and her comorbidities. But even at that, uh, with some persistence, uh, even after 20 years, uh, it, things don't, it, things can still still look good. And I guess you could say if, if you had a medical problem that it took your doctor 20 years to take care of, maybe you needed a better doctor. <laughs> I'll buy that. Um, so this is just some of, the, some of our team uh, with MC. I took this the last time she was in clinic. Um, uh, and of course, it, it, it does take a team uh, to do this. Um, just a quick uh, confession. I am a UC graduate, UC Santa Cruz, which, uh, as anybody, any of the cognizante know, is the coolest UC campus. <laughs> uh, and um, I couldn't come to California without paying a little homage to the Grateful Dead. So for any deadheads out there, there are five uh, dead references in the talk. There's a, there's a one US dollar for anybody who can tell me those, those references. <laughs> Thanks very much.